Catherine Scott Eggleston was born in Redmond, Oregon on May the 4th, 1971 to Paul, a former Seattle high school teacher and superintendent of Redmond School District in Redmond, Oregon and Heather Eggleston, an elementary school teacher. One of four daughters, she was raised in Redmond and went by the nickname Katie. Eggleston attended Oregon State University where she was a member of the Alpha Chi Omega sorority. She graduated from OSU in the spring of 1993 earning a Bachelor of Arts degree in English. After graduating from college, Katie relocated to Gresham, Oregon, a suburb of Portland, where she resided with her older sister Janet, then aged 37. She took a job working for Allnet Communication Services, working as a salesperson. On the morning of August 2nd, 1993, she departed the company's office to attend a business meeting in Portland. Before stopping at several businesses on North East Whittaker Way, it was Eggleston's first day making sales visits alone. She stopped at a bank and gasoline station before arriving at a Burger King restaurant near Lloyd Centre in the Lloyd District where she ate lunch. Shortly after, Katie arrived at the 700 building, then known as the Port of Portland building, located at 700 North East Multnomah Street, approximately two blocks from the Lloyd Centre, for a business appointment. She was seen making calls in the building lobby, and five individual witnesses who saw her there stated she appeared preoccupied and worried. At approximately 2.15pm, the man with whom Eggleston had her meeting with witnessed her exiting an elevator in the lobby with a man wearing a blue blazer. The client described the unknown man as having dark hair and a dark complexion. This was the last time Katie would be seen. Katie's absence was first noted when she failed to return to Allnet's office where she was supposed to meet her advisor at around 5pm. Also around 5pm, a witness named John Davis cited Eggleston's grey Volkswagen Golf stull in the Port of Portland parking lot. When Eggleston failed to return to the home she shared with her sister, Janet, Janet notified their father, who travelled to the Portland area from Redmond on August the 3rd. In the early morning hours of August the 3rd, a security guard at an industrial complex located at Northeast 122nd Avenue and Airport Way discovered Katie's Volkswagen Golf parked in the lot, approximately 9 miles from the Port of Portland building where it was last seen and near the Portland International Airport. The doors to the car were unlocked and all of its windows were rolled down with the keys still in the ignition, her purse and its contents were in the car, including a checkbook, credit cards and a small amount of cash, though her passport was absent. Katie's parents noted that she had retrieved her passport from their residence in Redmond while visiting 10 days prior. On August the 6th, fields located nearby were searched by volunteer searchers as well as other underbrush, gravel roads and farmlands. Katie's employer Allnet paid for additional air searches, which were followed with ground searches using bloodhounds. On August the 6th, the Portland police spokesman Derek Foxworth told reporters that it certainly looks like we might have a homicide. Katie's parents initially suspected her then-boyfriend, a Redmond resident, of her disappearance, but he was cleared by law enforcement who confirmed he had been in Central Oregon at the time she disappeared. Though initially suspected as a homicide, the Portland Police Bureau theorised that Katie had gone missing intentionally, possibly to avoid testifying in a potential court case against her sister Janet for tax evasion. 
Janet and her former husband were accused of failing to report around $190,000 in business income between 1986 and 1987. This revelation and detectives focusing on it as a potential motive for Katie to flee led to strife between the family and investigators, specifically lead detective Terry Wagner. Paul Eccleston later stated Wagner made it crystal clear she was not going to talk with us and that she still believed Katie probably disappeared of her own free will. Katie's family later hired a retired Oregon State Police detective to further investigate the disappearance case and several leads were produced. One of the leads regarded a security guard who possessed keys to the Port of Portland building's parking garage. To further search efforts, Alnet funded a tip hotline dedicated to tips in Eccleston's disappearance. One anonymous call placed to the tip hotline was made by a man who claimed to have abducted Katie and murdered her two weeks after her disappearance. The anonymous caller, who allegedly spoke with a southern dialect, stated that she would never be found because I killed her. By October 1993, police had received hundreds of tips in the case, but none proved fruitful. On October the 12th, law enforcement told the media that they maintained their stance that Katie had disappeared willingly, citing the lack of physical evidence as well as Katie's missing passport, again suggesting she had fled to avoid testifying against her sister Janet. However, Janet and her ex-husband Jeffrey had both pleaded guilty to their charges, foregoing a trial, meaning Katie would not have had to testify in the first place. After her sentencing over the charges, Janet told the media that her case was unrelated to her sister's disappearance. On May the 4th, 2001, Katie's 30th birthday, her family set up a hotline seeking additional tips in her disappearance. One man who called was a former attendant at a gas station located at Northeast 122nd Avenue and Stark Street, who claimed to have seen Katie near the time she disappeared. This gas station is located approximately four miles south of where her vehicle was discovered. The attendant claimed to have given a woman he believed to be Katie directions to the airport. According to the attendant, she departed in a vehicle whose make and model he could not recall. A short time later, the woman returned to the gas station, this time in a different car, and was accompanied by two black men. According to the attendant, the woman appeared dishevelled, partially undressed and crying, and seemed to be doing things to attract attention. The attendant also noted that when the woman had first arrived alone, he noticed a thick black book on the passenger seat, resembling the sales binders used by Allnet. The police's stance that Katie willingly disappeared was maintained until the 2004 disappearance and murder of Brooke Wilberger. Her murderer, Joel Courtney, was allegedly in Portland at the time of Katie's disappearance and is considered a possible suspect. In 2006, the FBI announced that Courtney had been cleared in two unnamed disappearances, though Katie's father told the press he had been informed that Courtney was still being examined as a potential suspect in her case. Katie's mother, Heather, died in July 2011, followed by her father, Paul, in March 2017. Both of them consistently maintained that their daughter had been murdered. As of 2021, her whereabouts remain unknown. <laughs>